The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful, peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest upon them. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. In this reading from the uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, uh, these people are sen sent out, the 72, the extra 72 that Jesus chooses, and Jesus chooses these 72 people to go out and do all these things to cure the sick. And uh, you wonder what, what it was like, what would have been like to go out and to do this, to be one of those chosen people to go out and to, um, to bring the love of God to others and to heal the sick. And, you know, maybe it's just me as a priest, but I would have a blast with that, you know? Woohoo! I could go out there and you're healing people. Hey, be healed, and they're healed, you know? And wouldn't that be awesome to be able to do that? You know, to be called, to be actually do something like that? To bring Christ to others? And, uh, and so, I don't know. Uh, but that's one of the things I love about being a priest, is to bring Christ to others and to bring them to eternal salvation, to bring them to eternal salvation, to not just do merely human things, but to do things that are divine by nature. And so, um, and, and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to be able to do that. I mean, when I was working construction, I did human things. I loved it. It was great. I loved working construction. But to do what helps people get to their eternal goal. And it's so awesome. And so I thank God. I thank God for, you know, even the blue nuns, you know, we see the blue nuns around, you know, they're so awesome to have around, they, they're great to have because they're a great witness to us of the love of Jesus Christ, and you know, and even priests, I love having priests because you know what, I need priests, I need priests to go to confession to and I do that often, you know, so to be able to go to confession to receive Jesus in the Eucharist and even when I die, I'm going to need a priest to anoint me. You know, so it's great to have priests around. Even for me as a priest, I love having other priests around because they're a sign of help to me. And so if you have anybody, you know anybody who's interested in the salvation of souls and bringing souls into eternity to not just change the world, but to change eternity in that way. Encourage them because that's stuff that lasts. It's not just like you just change things until you die and then it's nothing you've done 
So that's a great gift that we have in the priesthood and religious life. But we're all called. Every single one of us is called to bring Christ to others. That's what's out of, without exception. If you're baptized, you're called to bring others close to the Christ. You are called. And so to do the things that God calls you to do in your capacity. So, you know, it's, what, what are you doing? To bring grace to others. And, and I love it. I love it. For me as a priest, I love to see you being an instrument of God. You know, you're like, oh, Father, I'm never an instrument of God. I can never be. No, you are. And it's so awesome. You know what? You're a light to me. Get that? You're a light to me when you become a light to the world. When you bring grace to others and do God's holy will. That is so awesome. And you're awesome when you do that. To realize your eternal goal and the goals of others. And so what are you doing? Are you, are you bringing Christ to others? Are you bringing Christ to others? And sometimes it might be a matter of you know, just simply praying with somebody. Maybe somebody's having a hard time. Maybe they're having a bad day or maybe they got concerns. Maybe they got a relative or a friend who's in the hospital. Stop. Stop with them and just say, you know what? Let's pray together right now. You know, don't say, oh, I'll pray for you and then you promise to pray later and you don't pray. Pray now. So it's like, let's, let's pray. It could be an Our Father, Hail Mary, or Glory Be. That could be something simple. Or if it's something like somebody's in the hospital, you can just say, just take their hand and hold their hand and just say, Jesus, I ask you to bless this person who's in the hospital. I ask you to give them healing and, and give them consolation. You know? If it's money, they're having a hard time with money, just say, Lord Jesus, you know, help this per person with their money situation. Really, that's it. That's all you got to do. You don't have to be flowery and all nice words. You know what? Quite frankly, I don't like the flowery, nice word thing so much. Because a lot of times you get so lost in the flowery, nice words, you forget what you said. I mean, there's, there's no point to it. It's just a whole bunch of adjectives and adverbs with no subject. So say it. If you're awkward with your prayer... God doesn't care. God wants you to give his heart, and he knows. Look, if, if you're one of those people who's like, when you're talking, and you don't make any sense, right? You're just talking, you don't make any sense, and everybody looks like you, like you got a third eye in your head, that's fine, because God the Father is not going to look at you that way, right? He knows what's in your heart. He might chuckle a little bit. That's okay. Hopefully you can chuckle a little bit. And... He knows what's in your heart. You know, God isn't going to get angry at your prayers if you're not good at words, right? Like, if you have a child, you ever get that, parents, you have that child, and they're like, and then they're so nervous, and they're trying to talk to you, they're really saying nothing, and you can't understand what they're saying, in their squeaky voice. I mean, do you get angry with them? <laughs> you might, it might test their patience a little bit, but... You love them. And you say, okay, just say it. I have no problem. Just say what's in your heart. And, and just say it. Even if you're fumbling, even if you're nervous and all that, say it. Pray. Pray with them. And God listens. Because he loves you. He's your father. He's your father. And he listens to you. No matter how bad you form your words or how mumbly you are, he loves your words. You know, it's kind of like spouses. You know, spouses might know they love each other, but you have to act that out. You have to say you love each other. You have to do acts of kindness. Because it's one thing to just know you love each other, but there's something quite different when you do that act of love for each other. It's, there's something different in the relationship. It's the same thing in our relationship with God. We can't just say, oh, God knows I love... Just do the act that out. Live that out. Right? God listens to you. And he knows, but he just wants you to say it. Just say it, and he wants to hear that voice. He wants to hear 
your voice. And so pray. Pray th with those who are in trouble. It might be a matter of sometimes even giving your own little witness talk. You know, our Protestant brothers and sisters are really good. We need to get better at this. You know, think about the time we all got our stories where God has been there in our lives. God had done miracles in our lives in the past. And you know, sometimes we need to hear those things. I love hearing those stories. I, and most people love hearing those stories where God's grace and God's love was in their life. So what makes you think they don't want to hear your story? They want to hear it. They might not know it, but it's good to say it because first thing, it, it lifts them up, but also, if you ever tell your story, you ever notice what happens in your heart? Your heart is lifted up. Your faith becomes stronger because you're living out your faith. You're sharing your faith. And it's a real faith. It's not just the rules and regulations. It just it puts flesh on the teachings, on the dogma, on everything in the church. Your story. And so that's the great thing. Share that story. Say, you know, like did that person run at the cash register. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And just saying something as simple as that. Just being that witness to Jesus Christ and helping others get to heaven. You know, it's, it's one thing to do human things. It's one thing to even just help the poor, right? It's one thing. It's great to help the poor. It's great to feed them. It's great to give them a shelter. It's great to be a listening ear to people when they need that listening ear. But we're called to heaven. And that's what all these things are geared towards. Getting us all to heaven. So it's not good enough to do good works. We have to be motivated by love. And so we love. We love our neighbor, and we, we are there for them, guiding them to their eternal destiny, because that's what we're all made for, to make that eternal mark, not just a mark here on earth, but a mark for heaven, so that not just priests and religious, but you, when it comes to the end of your life, can see all those faces you've helped get to heaven and they can come up to you and say, thank you, thank you for helping me get to heaven. Thank you for helping me to be with the love of Christ. Amen.